Welcome everyone to our class tonight, the where to find your really great guy class. And I love this class because it's something that really came to me in the fall. I was super inspired because of, you know, all the times I keep hearing people who are really frustrated with dating or feeling like they don't know what to do or literally that there aren't enough good guys out there. And it just occurred to me that I really wanted to put together the whole picture because this isn't really just about the where, but it's really a mind, body, spirit experience of how we become more attractive and how we can free ourselves from our old stories so that we really do have the ability to attract the kind of person that matches us. So my name is Macy Matarazzo and I'm the founder of Big Happy Love and The Love Advantage and I've created programs that are designed to support single women who are really struggling to find love to become relationship ready so that you can create the kind of meaningful relationship that you've always dreamed about. And when I talk about a meaningful relationship or what I call big happy love, I'm talking about the kind of relationship that you feel completely able to be authentically you and that you're with someone who totally gets you for you and you can you feel supported you feel secure you have that trust that you can build something together and it's a mutually uplifting kind of experience so this is like the best possible relationship and i'll share because for me you know this was a big challenge i mean this is exactly why I'm doing this work. I struggled for decades flip-flopping into relationships that, you know, were what I call mediocre or bargain brand kind of relationships where you're settling into something that isn't really that fulfilling. Um, maybe you think that there, for me, I thought there were good parts to it. So we're just kind of hang on to those nuggets but it was really kind of like living off of crumbs i mean it just wasn't enough and i never really felt like normal i just felt like there was really something wrong with me that i couldn't totally share everything that's true for me in a lot of those relationships and you know as i got older it got harder um because you know, I'm seeing my friends get married and have babies and I was still single and what I call collecting chihuahuas, which I still have, that's Gary. Um, <laughs> and, you know, it was really painful because I, you know, I missed my whole reproductive years completely because I didn't really do anything about it except for continue to just kind of accept the kinds of relationships that I was attracting. Um, but once I, you know, really got to the point where I was like, I have to figure this out, I got support and did the practices that I teach in my programs and was able to attract my current partner and my husband, who's really, really a perfect match for me. So I know what it's like to feel like it's really impossible. I mean, I truly thought that there was no way I would find anyone who could get me. And and he really does. And I can say that I'm seeing so many of my clients right now, like literally, like right now, I have like five people this week who have said that they're really falling in love with people. And it's just amazing. You know, people who didn't date for years or had you know horrible divorces or just like were so insecure felt like there was something wrong that were able to like cultivate something different you're in the right place if you're feeling like any of that stuff i just shared 
But also, you know, if you're frustrated with like the dating scene and like how it is, because it's different. Like when I was in college, like we didn't have to deal with all these tools and technologies and it's just a different experience. And there actually is kind of different etiquette around it. And I teach about that. So um, if you're frustrated with dating or you feel exhausted with online dating, I think online dating can be a really big trigger for people. Or you know that, you know, what you've been attracting, if you've been attracting unavailable people or people who are just not matching up and you're tired of that, you're in the right place. And you, you want something better. I mean, because I know that a lot of you on this call are people who probably have done a lot of personal development already in your life. And so I get it. I mean, I had been studying, you know, spirituality and doing personal development since I was like 16 and I still struggled with the relationship space. So it's, it's totally understandable. Um, so I just really encourage you tonight you know, right now, maybe as you're settling in to just take a couple deep breaths and get comfortable where you are and just allow yourself to settle into this class because I'm here to offer you a whole bunch of wisdom. And in that buffet of information, my hope is that you find a nice selection of, in, of tips that you can do and use right away. Keep your journal handy and as you're inspired to take some notes, but really try to receive what's going on and notice notice how it feels for you. Because there may be some things that trigger you, like, like you don't want to do, but if it triggers you, that's usually also a good sign that there might be something there for you. So write those things down. Notice if I'm sharing something that might reveal what I would call kind of a love repellent or a love block. Take a note around that, that that's something that's true for you. Um, and then certainly note things that you are excited about trying out. Um, the other thing is I want to say stay through the whole call because we have an hour and 15 minutes that I blocked for this call. And this is all information. And you know, normally you'll get on webinars and maybe there'll be a couple tips and then sales thing about something that's going on. Well, I don't have anything that I can sell you on this call tonight. This is strictly teaching, but I do have a special gift for you at the end. So if you stay till the end, you'll be able to get that. Let's get started. So tonight in the Where to Find Your Really Great Guy, I'm going to go through and share with you 11 different sort of wares. And the wares are in mind, body, and spirit. And for each one, I'll also offer a either a, a mantra you can use. And a mantra is like a phrase that you repeat, um, like an affirmation that is helps drive you to what it is you want so it helps create more of a positive belief in you so i'll be sharing some mantras that you can use and I'll also share some fun real world experiments and a real world experiment is an opportunity to test some of these things out and see what what works for you because ultimately, when you can start doing things that are different, you create a different reality. You, you create a different experience for yourself. And that's why we're here. Because you're on this call because, you know, dating may not be working for you or you're really wanting to find that really special guy. And um, so it's going to take trying something new. So the first one is, he is in between. And I say that because he is out there in the world. He's in between all these singles events you're doing, all the intentional um, ways that you go meet someone. Maybe you're not doing any singles events. So just know, I mean, 
it's time that we recognize that if we're single, any place is a place. But if we are not in our awareness that you can actually meet someone in any kind of experience that you're, whether you're going to the bank or going to a yoga class or just taking the dog for a walk, there are men in the world recognizing that we don't have to be limited to really specific kind of dating strategies. I mean, finding love is about noticing the special moments in between, opening up the potential right now, you can create this new beginning right now, that you could meet someone anywhere. You just have to open up your eyes and be willing to be surprised. This teaching is really about waking up to what could be possible and start looking around. The mantra I want to give you for this one is, everywhere I go, there's an opportunity for love. So even just saying that to yourself right now, everywhere I go, there's an opportunity for love. How does that feel to you when you say that? Like, you know, can you feel the more expansiveness than when you're saying there are no, no good guys out there? As soon as, if we continue to repeat that mantra, there are no good guys out there, there are no good guys out there, that is going to become our reality. So I encourage you to practice replacing it with something else. And here's your option. Everywhere I go, there's an opportunity for love. So one of the experiments I like to share with this is when you're out in the world doing the things you have to do or want to do, what would it be like to just compliment a man that you see? You, it doesn't matter if they're married or if, you don't need to know any of that, but like, what would it be like to just open yourself up to, wow, that's a really cool tie or something when you see someone at the coffee shop. This is just opening yourself up to the universe. This doesn't mean that you have to like date that person, but it's just sending a message to the universe that I am open and available. I invite you to consider that experiment. The next one is kind of related to this. It's you can find him with your good guy lenses. So it's like you have good guy radar and this is something that you have to consciously turn on in yourself. One of the reasons why we see people who we feel like are jerks or losers or, or just not matches for you is because we're so focused on that. We're like so dialed into this, this kind of drama of, you know, there not, no one's out there. And we keep repeating that. We have to consciously turn on the, the lenses of good guy radar and, and cultivate this even more. I mean, this is a practice. So in sitting here right now, if you tune in and just think about good guys in the world, like who do you know right now that represents what you would consider a good guy? And it, once again, it doesn't matter if they're married in another relationship or a movie star or, you know, a famous person or a spiritual leader. It's just like, how can we start expanding our vibration that there are good guys out there? It's about taking inventory of where you see good guys. And one of the other, so that's kind of the practice. You can list the the good guys you know in the world and the the experiment here would be to start looking for them in your world whether it's at your work whether the guy opening the door for the the single mom at the grocery store whoever it is just recognize like tune in wow you know that seems like a kind person really dial it up like a radio dial the more you start witnessing and collecting this kind of evidence for yourself, 
the more you're going to be able to call that in. Because what we focus on starts growing. If we're focusing on there are no good guys out there, that's what you're going to continuously see. In doing that, that may even help you if you did want to try online dating. We'll get into that a little bit more. So really, really, really start looking at the greatness that you do see in men. And this works for any kind of partnership. If, you, if you're looking for a woman, you want to look for those amazing women in the world. So the love experiment is collecting lists of great, great candidates. And the love mantra is, I see great men all around me. I see great men all around me. So practicing that. And I find this is really helpful. I actually just heard from one of my newer private clients who's, who started practicing this a couple weeks ago. And she couldn't believe how many men she was actually seeing in her world that she wasn't noticing before. And what it did for her was it started boosting her feeling of hope. Like she started feeling more hopeful about, you know, what's possible for her. Because before she wasn't even not noticing. And I think we do that. We're so busy in our lives. We start like turning off and going on autopilot so much of our days that we miss out on, you know, what's really happening. Which I do want to pause for a second here because, you know, the one thing that, you know, the, these teachings are really, really powerful. But the one thing that we have to recognize in all of this is that, you know, finding our great guy is not the solution ultimately. I mean, of course, I'm teaching you how to get there. But if you're feeling um, like that is going to solve everything else, I promise you it won't. I mean, when we arrive at that place, these emotions that we're feeling are still going to be here. So just understanding that what we're doing here is beginning to work with our belief system in a healthier way, but that um, ultimately we have to recognize that this really is the moment. This is the moment that we can start creating more joy in our life. So we'll be talking more about that, but it's about finding those ways, those beliefs and ways of talking to ourselves that actually support us. So when we say, I see great men all around me, that's just a more supportive statement and more hopeful statement. So the, the third one is taking this even a little deeper. You're not dating Siri. <laughs> so when we're in our devices and doing everything ourselves, I mean, the reason why I'm, I like to share this one is because as women, we are very, we're capable, we're resourceful, and it's not like we can't do stuff. Like we can do a ton. And the, the Siri piece is that Often we get a lot of information or knowledge from just using our, our devices. Like if we're out and we need direction somewhere, we can use, use our device in two seconds. We know where we're going. This one is about like, what would it be like to ask for some help? So rather than always, you know, go to our regular, you know, take care of ourselves, got it covered um, response, you know, this tip is about asking men for help. So, you know, and this is a great way to create an invitation for a conversation with a guy. So if you're out and you see someone that you would like to talk to, you didn't notice a guy because you're practicing the first two steps I shared, you notice a like handsome man that you would be interested in just having a conversation with, be creative. Just ask a simple question. Where would you recommend to go for coffee here? Like just make something up. These are great ways to initiate conversation. It's just 
allowing yourself to be curious and and the thing that men love most of all first of all it's women <laughs> second of all is to be helpful they really 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 want to be able to help and that brings them so much joy so that's just one thing we know about men in the way that we can support ourselves in engaging without feeling like you have to wait for a guy to come up to you everywhere you are is to create a gentle open sweet invitation and that invitation like I said, could be a lot of things. Could be literally, I actually don't know where the closest bank is. Do you know where it is? I mean, maybe that's true for you. Or if you're just wanting to initiate something to say, you know, where would you recommend for lunch around here? Or something like that. That's just a great way to kind of flirt and start a conversation in when you need it. We can always go to Siri and ask her to tell us where to go. But like, if you're single and you're wanting to start opening up to creating a relationship, start engaging. These are opportunities to engage and you don't have to wait for a singles event to do that. This, this love mantra is, I am willing to ask for help. The experiment is playing with that, that experience of asking a question or making a comment to open up the space for connection. The fourth one is he is in your love story. This one is about making love a priority. So if it's something you want to create, really consciously making that a priority in your life, doing learning like you're doing here, like you would finding a job or buying a house, let it be important. I think sometimes we think that we're supposed to just let it happen just leave it to default and let you know sort of nature takes its course but honestly you know this really is one of the most sacred things we can create as a human on the planet it is worth bringing some focus to it i mean i certainly noticed that that made a big difference for me because once i made it a priority and i wasn't just kind of what I call peripheral dating, like just doing my job, doing everything else and kind of throwing a note out on a online site every once in a while. It changed everything. Like it really did. I, I really made it. Even I made my year that year, the theme of it was finding love. I really made that a focus. The other thing that's really important here is why I call it the love story is to be willing and courageous enough to talk about it, like share this, you know, let it be important in the way that you, you have that conversation and say, you know, one of the things that's happening for me in my life is that, you know, I really am committed to creating and finding my person this year. That's something I said a lot. I said, I'm ready to find my person this year because if it's in total secrecy, it's almost like you're hiding it even from the universe by being able to openly communicate it with friends or family or anyone really then who knows what's possible people may even have people they want you to meet or i just feel like as a global consciousness when you can share more and you have trusted friends that are rooting for you it's just more powerful because lasting love is about sharing with someone so in creating in creating that kind of relationship you want you want to start sharing that now so the love mantra is i am excited with sweet anticipation to meet my special guy and one of the experiments that i share here which is something you could do in your journal is you know write down your intention write down what it is you want to create and really get excited about it when you can be really clear 
and intentional and also put that feeling into it of you know your life and love what it's going to be like writing that story maybe even saying it from the perspective of almost like writing a thank you note like thank you so much for sending me my special person I adore him he adores me and really start getting into the beauty of of what it's going to be like for you and sense it because it's you know manifesting is on multiple levels one you want to be really clear about what it is you want in that story so you want to be really clear about your vision without depriving yourself of anything without like second guessing what's possible that's not about that it's about you know really starting from the best possible i like to say to you know really look at your vision and and question the things like are am i putting this down because i actually don't think it's possible to have someone who not only likes you know crazy art but also likes chihuahuas and also likes glittery art or whatever crazy thing that i like um if you're not putting it down because you're like oh that's not possible then you're already you're already second guessing you're already what i'm calling bargain branding your vision so i want you to go for the perfect thing this is not about finding someone who puts up with you or tolerates this or will accept that no this is about like someone who adores everything about you period and then later you get to decide when you start meeting people you know do they match up or not no big deal this is just really about you putting it out there and making it super juicy okay so create your love story and talk about it share it the fifth one he's attracted to your values and passions so really being clear on what it is that matters to you in the world is a big part of the vision too so you really want to know what it is that you value and a couple ways you can do that is to kind of look at the most important times the most inspired times in your life and look at what the value was there you know for me I share that you know, when I did my senior art thesis in, in college, that was like a pivotal moment. And I know that that was, that's a value for me because I value creativity. So that was important for me in relationship. You may be like some of your most important things may be like around like family gatherings or celebrations. If you know that about you, then you know, that may, family may be one of your most important values. And just to be clear, I mean, there are the, if you look at a list of values, you're probably going to like most of them. But this is about finding the ones that are most important. So those top ones that really you can't imagine being who you are without these things. And also to be able, once again, like with the vision, like noticing where you're kind of bargain branding, noticing in the values where you might be stating a value coming from an external thing, either your family of origin or the church you went to or other things that are externally focused. What is it that is like totally intrinsic to who you are? So you just want to kind of tune into that too. So, and then engaging in activities that are values based, like maybe you volunteer at a marathon or something because you really value health and in, in running is something you like. Finding those things that align with you and get, be engaged in those things. Um, I, I really actually attribute that as part of my process and that I volunteered at a senior center and like did craft craft or noon parties. We made stuff and it was super fun and and I loved it and I really feel like there was a blessing in that that really it opened me up even though clearly I'm not going to I wasn't really interested in in meeting someone who was like 90 to date 
but I was really interested in serving my community in a way that aligned with me. And it was definitely something that was a really core piece in my life and just doing fun things. Like when we're doing things that are fun and we just enjoy them, then we're out of our head and we're in our hearts. And that's, that's just opening up your love vibe even more. So just being in a space where you're, you're getting out, you're doing fun stuff. And then on the flip side to that, the same time, being aware of where, when you're doing things just because you feel like you have to do them and you're afraid that you're going to miss out. So the acronym for it is FOMO, fear of missing out. So if you're doing stuff because you're like, well, I better go do that because there's, what if my person's there? This used to happen to me a lot. Like I would go to, I would feel like I had to go to a party even though I wasn't really feeling it. Um, because I was afraid I was going to miss out on something. So really honoring yourself and listening to yourself. Yes, if you're single and you want to meet, you find your person, yeah, you want to be engaged in the community. You want to get out, but you also don't want to push yourself to the point where you're doing stuff because you just absolutely are only doing it out of fear. You want to do stuff out of love, which is another one of our points. The love mantra here is, my passions are leading me to meaningful love. Number six, using your love potion. This one is pretty simple. Your love potion is your smile. So really being able to start using your smile, like when you're out, smile. Maybe it feels annoying. <laughs> it used to bug me when people would be like, smile. It just like really triggered me. It just pissed me off. But it does actually trigger stuff in our physical body and our nervous system and stimulates hormones that do help make us feel happy. It boosts your mood. It boosts your immune system. It's really good stuff. So just being conscious of smiling more. There's kind of a trick to it. Like you really want to find those ways of connecting in truthfully, like when you do a smile and it's like this, and you're just sort of faking it, like that doesn't really feel that good. But if you can think of it in terms of um, how you're actually serving others, I like to think of it this way because one of my teachers, Yogi Bhajan, who's uh, kundalini yoga the master of kundalini yoga he taught that a woman's smile heals and especially men he heals men so when we smile it actually has a huge impact and um if you know that if you know that your smile actually can change another person's day in a dramatic way it generates a different kind of smile. So think of it that way. Like think, wow, I can, I can really make a difference just by giving this gift. So that's a blessing. And I would practice it, really practice what it feels like what, to smile at people, connect with people that you don't know in the world and, and notice how you feel and and sometimes you can even sense how the other person is feeling once you do that. So smile, smile, smile. The love mantra, my smile heals. So your experiment is to smile at people. And just notice what you notice when you're smiling at people. Number seven is creating relationship prosperity like being helpful, kind of like I shared earlier with, you know, volunteering and, and getting out and doing stuff that's aligned with your values, like really recognizing that when you're in service of others and helping people and doing things for others, get out of our own story. Like, I think that that can be really challenging when we're single, like it's easy to be home doing stuff by ourselves and and getting into 
feeling a pity party or or lonely honestly and and feeling some pain and it's hard to snap out of it one way to snap out of it is to do something for someone else being aware of power that has is is really great really noticing part of that is being aware of if you're getting into a funk like aware of like are you complaining or criticizing or comparing like those things are really toxic practices so maybe even doing a diet of no complaining for 24 hours and see how you feel certainly in the idea of serving others and helping others you're creating that prosperity cycle where you're giving and then you can also then receive. So the love experiment is coming up with new ways you can serve. You know, even if it's just by sending a, a note to someone else, like thinking about someone and sending them something that, you know, you, it, you, it reminded you of them or checking in with someone like consciously getting out of your head. And then the second experiment is abstaining from complaining, comparing, or criticizing for 48 hours. So I'm hoping that you're jotting down some ideas and, and getting some inspirations. Number eight is um, he loves your goddessness. And this is one that is huge when we're single and we're looking for love really getting into and connecting to our own femininity and presenting yourself in that way wherever you're going whatever you're doing you know how are you feeling in the way you're presenting yourself in the way you're dressing in the way your your hair is this is a time to be prepared for anything because if you're out and about, you could truly meet someone, especially if you're following some of the tips from the beginning of the class. And other ways that you treat yourself, like how do you treat yourself in a way that feels like you are this special partner? When we wanna call in a special relationship, we need to experience that right now. So however you treat yourself, I want you to look at it through the lens of this is how I want to be treated in my romantic relationship and really do nice things for yourself. Walk with your head up high, looking up, not looking down. I mean, that physically actually does open you up more and treating yourself in special ways, maybe buying yourself a fancy smoothie here or really looking your best when you do go out so that you have that presence just from your own confidence of how you feel and, and that may be something that that you want help with one of the the programs that i've created is you know an authentic beauty makeover which is really focusing on you know, learning about how our presence is and also coming to understand and connect with our own authentic beauty and it's a really powerful practice because if you're going online or or going on dates you want to be able to know that you feel good in your own skin it's the inside work and the outside work so this love mantra is a really important one i am pro me so you're on your own team, you're celebrating you, you feel good in your mind, body, and spirit. And if this isn't true for you, I do recommend that you consider getting some support because it starts with the inside. Number nine, he moves towards love and runs from fear. When we are, like I said earlier around the, the fear of missing out, we're making our decisions based on fear all day long that is not a love vibration you've got to be aware of the things that are are creating love repellent kind of response 
And there are a lot of different things. I mean, I have a whole list of love repellents, but the foundation of it is when you're feeling fearful or you're feeling like it, nothing's going to work out or you feel like there's got to be something wrong with you or you're insecure or you're, you're not knowing what to do or say if you go on a date or terrified to go to a singles event, um, then the fear is actually repelling. What you want to be able to experience is how do you experience more of a love vibration, which is that confidence, that radiance, that grace, and that authentic you that, you know, you're really clear about what it is you want to create. And you, you, you feel like you can engage with potential partners wherever you are. Um, one of the things that really is a repellent is when you feel like you need to kind of people please or you're an over giver. Like these things are really kind of draining and don't allow your love vibe to shine really bright. And in order to be successful dating, you have to be willing to go of worrying about what people think of you. Because this is really about finding the person who matches who you really are. And if you're afraid to show that, then you're going to continue to get these sort of like mediocre relationships because you're not able to be you completely. And the only way for your ideal person to find you is if you can feel like you can live in 100% concentrated you. The love mantra here is, it is safe to just be me. This is really, I think, the biggest thing that I see over and over again with, with my clients is that there's just so much fear and feeling like there's just something wrong and that creates more fear. And, you know, I notice certainly with, a couple of I recently heard from that are falling in love right now, which is amazing. You know, they had so much fear before. I mean, and the fear was coming from their past relationships, from really having devastating experiences, and then going back into the dating world and continually feeling like nothing's working and to the point where you just they just one of my clients, she just kept describing the wall like she had this huge wall up and she just couldn't even imagine going to singles events and once we started really like cultivating her security and she started celebrating more of who she was in an authentic way then she actually met someone a couple months ago that is a really quality fantastic guy and they're developing their relationship now. And she that was the first person she met. So, I mean, she she did this work with me. And the first person she met seems to be an amazing candidate. And whether this is her person for the long haul or not, what it is showing, and this is what I hear over and over again, is that totally new caliber of person and not the same person she was attracting before. So celebrating that because it is possible when we can get clear. The next one is actually about online dating. I mean, I know that that can be a horrible topic for so many people, <laughs> but um, the truth is, I look at statistics, there are 54 million people, single people in America, and 49 million are trying online dating. So that's like a huge percentage. So I think one of the biggest myths that I hear about online dating a lot is that it just doesn't feel organic. And, and I get it because, you know, we're, we've been used to like different experiences, like certainly before the internet, we did expect to meet people, you know, where we were going and through friends and, and during classes or whatever we were doing. 
But the truth is that this is natural for 2016. That's where we are right now. We have the technology, we have computers. This is this is our natural. I like to help people, like I have some tips on how to make it comfortable because I think the one way, reason why it it's people hate it and feel so exhausted by it is because of the way they're approaching it. Here are some online dating tips. Um, to consider because it is really different. First of all, I mean, you've got to start with an attitude of amusement that you're just going to use this tool as one way. It doesn't have to be the only way because there are so many other kind of spaces that you're choosing to have fun, like choosing to be curious and, and engage with other singles and see what happens. Um, the other tip for women is that you don't have to wait for men to write you. You can absolutely reach out and like with my example earlier, just asking a simple question, sort of asking for help, but really you're engaging in conversation, making a comment about maybe something that was written on their profile and just keeping it super, super simple. Just opening up that little gate that says, hey, I'm, I'm curious, and let that be an invitation. So you don't have to wait around. You don't have to settle for whoever is just naturally writing you because there are some, I don't think any woman is exempt from, you know, the guy who's in his bathroom taking a selfie just with the muscle shirt on or not even a shirt on. It's just like, in the toilets in the background like there I mean they're like probably not going to be spared from those necessarily but it's still your opportunity to look at other people's profiles and initiate conversations with the people you like and then on the other the other side of that is that even though there's a computer there we still have to recognize that there's a person on the other side so being, coming into it with compassion and an open heart to recognize that people who are out there, there are a lot of people who are really longing for love. It's our human condition. So not thinking that every person out there is like some sort of freak or creep. Um, remembering that we have to come into this being kind and treating people the way we want to be treated. Sort of normalizing reject, rejection in the way that part of the process of finding love is that it is a sifting, it's a sorting, it's a kind of picking and choosing process. So if, if someone doesn't write you back that you wrote or, or says that they're not into you, like really practicing not taking that personally. It's not about you, it's them. Like it's their decision and if it's not a match it's just not a match and really not putting all our energy into what's not working but bringing our energy into what is working like and really focusing on your vision focusing on why it is you really want to create a relationship and really strengthen the things that are positive and really 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 commit to that because if it's your priority, you got to make that a commitment to manage the space in between your ears and not let yourself go into creating the drama. It does require patience. It requires having faith and it requires trusting that your person is already out there. I can guarantee it. It's just a matter of getting into that that vibrational equivalent that can call him in because relationship is about commitments i mean if you're wanting a committed relationship the first commitment you have is to yourself how are you committing to yourself in taking care of yourself in owning the space in between your ears you know being really conscious of your thoughts and the stories and 
and noticing the beliefs that aren't supporting you and and doing practices or getting support in order to help, you know, shift that because truly you want to be able to be in a space that is more elevated so that you can create an elevated relationship. If you're kind of not keeping up with your commitments to yourself or you don't keep commitments with other people, you want to notice that because that is a vibration of lack of commitment, which is going to call in someone who can't commit. So if you want to commit a relationship, really tuning into that, that was kind of a tangent around the online dating thing. But I think that there is, um, there is that commitment to yourself that you want to keep. And part of that is managing how you're responding to things and keeping the focus on what it is you want. Because if you continue to get into it and like, this isn't working, this isn't working, this isn't working, then no, it's never going to work because all your energy is creating more of that not working. The love mantras here is I am lovable, beautiful, and playful online dating. So really letting yourself um, not take it so seriously. Just let it be another tool that you use and, and have fun with it. And certainly your online profile and your pictures are a huge piece to this. And that is another thing that I have helped people with a lot because one of the things I notice is that, and you wanna be excited about your pictures and have the right pictures up there, not have too many. But it's really important because it's, it's a, it is a visual thing. I mean, there's, um, so I encourage people to get quality pictures. And that's actually part of what we do in the Authentic Beauty Makeover. The final one is learning how to be the best you. And this is really how are you being your own best kind of partner? And every way that you talk to yourself, like tr how you treat yourself, um, all of these, these things influence who you are attracting in. In order to find your great guy, you got to be that great gal to yourself. Like you just have to start creating that relationship right now and experiencing it right now. Like I said earlier, meeting him is not going to take away the emotions that you might feel right now. There may be part of you that says, you know what, I'm going to be, I'm not going to be miserable when I'm in a relationship. When you're in the relationship, you're going to love the relationship, but those feelings are not going to go away. So it's really critical that you understand that this is the best relationship now. So how are you going to create that relationship right now within you so that you can have that, that vibrational equivalent for that quality relationship to come in? You don't have to do this by yourself. I mean, you definitely can enlist trusted support. And I think in terms of, you know, what Big Happy Love and the Love Advantage has to offer is that kind of structured support so that you can have accountability, have support, get the kind of teachings to help you belief shift and you know, over time and in the process to really cultivate that you that can have the relationship you're dreaming of. Because a lot of what's happening is that we have so many beliefs and fears that are working against what it is that we really want. And the belief that I'm going to be single forever is going to, is going to win out or the belief that there's no good guys out there is going to win out if that's wired into your subconscious from past experiences or from having relationships that failed that were so painful. 
And it makes sense. Bodies are here to, it's, it's trying to protect us. So there are often like multiple different protection mechanisms that are built up and that, oh, that does create a wall. So how can you work to, um, to bring those down? Well, one way is, is I suggest do considering getting support and having that person who can kind of hold your hand through a process and that you can commit to. Because you can create something that's better than ever. Whatever you believe right now or whatever you've experienced before, that doesn't have to be your only reality. It's really what's calling in our heart. Like what it is that, you know, what do you really feel? Like if you're getting that nudge that you're really wanting to create a life with someone, that's real. And that means that it's possible. But there may be some layers that need to be kind of peeled away so that you are the 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 person, the the one who can receive it. So it's about becoming that person who can receive that elevated relationship. That is the, that's the final tip, becoming the, learn how to be the best you, the you that can have the kind of relationship you've dreamed about. And I know that, you know, there are many of you who do want more, I mean, want more support or more help or more classes, whatever it is. And I am definitely happy to share those with you and in one way that you can do that i mean like i said i don't i don't have something to like sell you right here on the call but the one thing that i do have is that i have opened up a couple spots in my love advantage premier program which is a year-long program that's basically everything that you need to not only heal and um, remove those kind of walls and fears and, and shift those beliefs that have kept you attracting the same kind of relationship over and over again, or maybe not even anything at all, that um, it takes the time to do that. And then it also is focused on, you know, doing that authentic beauty kind of makeover piece where you're getting ready to be in the dating world with a new beginning, a new fresh start, and new clarity and confidence. And then also, you know, dating support and relationship support, because this gives you time to actually develop a relationship, if that's what happens for you. I mean, it's, it's a really powerful year long process. So if that's something that you are curious about or you're interested in and you're really serious about changing your relationship experience i do want you to email me so you all you need to do is email me at macy macy at big happy love.com and i'll send you an application reach out if that's something you would like to do right now just shoot me an email and i'll send you the application and we can have a discussion and see if that's a match. Um, the other thing I have is that I want to offer you all my groovy date. It's basically a pre-date mojo booster. So it's an audio that you can listen to. So it has a checklist, a five-point checklist, which you know every single woman needs. And also this audio that you can listen to, it's just a couple minutes long that will completely boost your mojo before a date. So it builds your, your energy and your confidence and helps you sparkle even more. And all the women that have been sharing with me over the last couple of weeks, their success stories around love, these five different women right now, it's pretty amazing they all use the mojo booster so i want to send that to you in order for you to get that you need to email me at macy at big and just put in the subject groovy date and i will go ahead and send that to you you can also just go online 
and go to the loveadvantage.com front slash groovy date. I hope I got that right. Anyway, loveadvantage.com front slash groovy date and you can just sign up for it um, and it'll be sent to you. But I'm happy to just see them and email it to you. So I hope you found this helpful. I know there's so many tips and, and that I could break this down into multiple classes. I'd love to hear what really worked for you. So email me your thoughts there. Or you can always go on the Macy Big Happy Love Facebook page and and share some of your comments. But I am so happy to be able to support you on this journey. Let's see what time it is. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I really believe that every one, I mean, we all are here to be in connection. I mean, that's what we are wired to do as human beings since we were born. We come out and we're, we're wanting to create those connections. And, you know, over time, we collect stories and, and pains and traumas that do make it harder for us to be clear about how we can call in our special person. And, but it's all totally workable. I just love sharing this stuff with you and I'd love to hear from you and let please let me know how I can be helpful to you because I love doing this work. I mean, it's my life's passion. So reach out and so much love to you. Gary says good night and we will see you soon. Good night.